Hi guys, Iron Cameraman here. For many, Skibidi Scientist was a favorite villain as he stood out for his intelligence and cunning. However, after episode 70, when we saw his death with our own eyes, many YouTubers, including myself, forgot about him. And you were probably surprised when you read the title of this video, because how can he defeat the Astro Toilets if he's no longer alive? This is the paradox of the scientist. He has always influenced the war between the races and not always physically on the battlefield. Da Fook Boom, knowing this, has added a slow motion plot bomb in the form of containers that are about to explode as soon as he shows us what's inside them. I'll remind you that Boom himself said that inside the container is the scientist's latest unfinished project, but didn't specify which one. I already had a video after 71 episodes where we speculated what could be there, taking into account the information we have. However, after part one of episode 72, another interesting detail was added. It turns out that there are two containers. And besides that, I noticed one very interesting new feature of the big Astro Toilet. And this feature may give an answer why Ski Beady Toilets started to support G Toilet and what he has that was not there at the time of episode 60, when even regular Ski Beady Toilets went against him as we can see here. And if it wasn't for the scientist, he would have been canceled a long time ago. But now the scientist is gone. But many Ski Beady Toilets have started to support him while the Astro Toilets want to kill him and all the part of the Ski Beady Toilet race that helps G Toilet even harder. Today I will tell and prove exactly why this is happening and what might be hiding in those containers. I assure you, today's theory of mine will completely change the way you think about the series. And before we start, don't forget to put like, let's try to break the record and collect 10,000 likes. And when we reach 100,000 subscribers, you'll be very surprised by my exclusive video, which I'm keeping secret for now. It's my most global video. And since statistics show that 90% of my viewers watch me unsubscribed, it's clear that even if every second person subscribes, we can reach 100,000 today. Anyways, here we go. Traditionally, I will start with an interesting fact on which all my further logic will be based. Have you ever noticed that almost everything we see in the series comes back sooner or later after some time? Let me remind you about a couple of recent examples. For example, in episode 70, we saw the return of Skibidi DJ after 64 episodes. And in the last 72 episodes, we saw the return of Scientist Cameraman after 18 episodes. And in addition to that, we have seen Boom explain things to us with future episodes backwards and forwards. I'll give you one of the latest examples. In episode 67, we saw for the first time that the scientist has a technology in the form of a screen with a glow like the TV men. And then three episodes later, we are shown that he has the books of the TV men in his warehouse where he copied it from. Here's another example of G-Toilet. If you look at the previous episodes up to episode 65, you may notice that at one point G-Toilet had his lasers reduced. And even then, it was not clear to me why they were reduced, and it was only in episode 65 that Da Fook revealed that G-Toilet was a fake. And now, let me explain why Da Fook Boom does this, and what is the main secret of the series. This method and the specifics of which I have described in the general public are known by the term Chekhov's gun. I will not explain all the details here, but in simple words, almost everything we see on the screen must have at least some meaning in the future. As the author of this method himself said, You can't put a loaded gun on stage if no one means to fire it. In Russia, where Boom himself is from, this writer and his saying are very popular, and so I wouldn't even be surprised if it turned out later that the hanging sword with the red line we saw in the lab warehouse was a reference to this. Also, adding fuel to the fire is Da Fook Boom's relatively recent interview with Forbes magazine, from which it becomes clear that he has had the script for the series and the story itself fully developed for a very long time, meaning that what we see is a coherent story written in such a way that past episodes are connected to future ones. He doesn't make episodes like multiverses that have to follow the trends and tendencies of the original, causing them to lose the integrity of the narrative. 
And here, the containers are also another Chekhov's gun. And if now you think that it's just a container and you shouldn't pay so much attention to it, then I'm going to explain to you why at the moment it is the content of these containers that is almost the most interesting subject for discussion in the series. And I'll start with the Astro Toilet feature I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Having re-watched all the scenes with him, I noticed one regularity. Almost all his actions are directly or indirectly related to the transfer of energy, with the capture of energy, or even with the reduction of matter without touching him. So his power and chip are somehow related to cheating physics, and there's an interesting thought that creeps up on me. If they can affect matter so much, what's stopping them from being able to increase skibidi toilets? What if they were the ones doing the work of increasing certain skibidi toilets? After all, we all know that G toilets, as well as other large toilets, were small in their original form. And given that they are, or at least were, the masters of the skibidi toilet race, it could very well be that they were the ones who had the monopoly in deciding who to give strength and power to. If before episode 70 the Astro Toilets couldn't punish G Toilet because the scientist was protecting him, now it's unlikely that the commander would find common ground with the Astro Toilets anymore. But what is strange is why the Skibidi Toilets went after G Toilet and did not join the seemingly stronger Astro Toilets. Therein lies the answer to the question of what is in the containers. Now, everything I'm going to say is purely my personal speculation, and I don't know if this will be the case in the series or not. Not, but you'll definitely enjoy these theories. First, I'll tell you what's in the second container. The way it looks to me, it's probably a completely empty container, or a trap container. It is made with the purpose that Astro Toilet, or Alliance, having learned about the significance of its contents, wanted to steal it, and then only realized that they were brazenly deceived. This option strikes me as the most plausible, if only because we've heard repeatedly from Dafuk Boom that G Toilet has a plan for everything, and the option of stealing the container is probably the first thing G Toilet thought of and secured himself by creating a fake version of the container. Well, or it is banal other parts of this project because on one container could not be enough space. To me, the first option is more plausible. About what this project, I already told you right after 71 episodes, but now I'll add another brain-breaking theory to that video. It seems to me there may be technology there which is analogous to the technology of Astro Toilets. And with it, the Skybeady Toilets will be able to increase their own fighters, so they wouldn't be dependent on the Astro Toilets above them. What if the augmented DJ from Episode 70 is the first test version of this device? And then I also thought that the big Astro Toilet killed Skibidi DJ for nothing, because he's friends with G Toilet. But the way it looks to me, he broke his big body ruthlessly, as this Skibidi Toilet was the first Skibidi Toilet to be enlarged without the consent of the Astro. Put alike if you two got sad when you first saw the sad little DJ in episode 71, but at least it's a good thing he didn't die completely. If this theory turns out to be true, it also explains why so many Skibidi Toilets joined G Toilet's team after the scientist died. They would finally get to decide for themselves, who to augment and who not to augment. In other words, they have hope for freedom and fair elections, as strange as that sounds. I will also add that my old theory that there is a time machine inside the container that predicts the future even now has a chance to come true. By the way, friends, if you want the same detailed and cool videos about the series from Dom Studio, I hasten to please you with cool news. We have a new channel on this universe. Meet Moon Titan. Greetings, dear viewers. I would be very happy if you support me with your likes and views. On the screen, you see my analysis of 30 episode. Click and watch. And the link to the channel you will find in the description under the video. Thank you all for watching and supporting me. Bye.